Two people and thousands of farm animals have died in the Free State. The cause? Rift Valley fever. When the breakout started, at first we didn't really know what, what was going on and there was quite a lot of abortions and I think that's what causes us quite a loss. Not the fact that the couple of animals died, but the abortions. There wasn't offspring the, the next season. On some of the farms, I think the mortalities were close to 50, 60, even 90 percent of the lambs dying. The farmers they are dependent on these animals for their livelihood, so it was a devastation for the farmers, the farming community, and also some of their personnel becoming sick. According to our records, 10,000 animals that we recorded as having aborted or died during the outbreak. The outbreak escalated very fast for us because the first case we were informed on the 13th of February and on the 25th and 26th already we had more cases and one death. For us it was like it's wildfire and it was correlating to the information that we got from agriculture that there are more farms that are Rift Valley Fever diagnosed. These diseases that come from animals are called zoonotic diseases. They're the biggest risk for pandemics. When a pandemic emerges, all you can really do is put out the fire. What we try and do is get ahead of it by working in the places where they're most likely to emerge and stopping them at the very first signs. It's confined to Africa here, but there have actually been cases here in Saudi Arabia and Yemen, so it has spread off of the continent. The Rift Valley Fever Virus Project is based here in South Africa and was developed as a collaboration between EcoHealth Alliance and the Center for Emerging and Zoonotic Diseases. We are studying Rift Valley Fever Virus because it affects domestic animals, wildlife, and people, making it a one health concern. We're working in all three of these groups to better understand how the virus acts in between epidemics. And we're also studying the vector, which is a mosquito that spreads the virus from animal to animal, and the factors that impact the vector, such as climate, soil, and vegetation. We hope that this research will be able to be used to better predict when outbreaks might occur in South Africa, and also for the South African farmers to be able to use to help decrease the severity of outbreaks when they do occur. The Rift Valley Fever Project, I think it gives a really exciting opportunity for the public and the private sectors to work together. It creates a bond of trust and communication and I think that will be a very positive outcome of this project. The response of the farmers is overwhelmingly positive and see this as exceptionally important research work and it has major, major economic impact on farmers in this country. We are very excited to be part of this testing. I think it will help educate the people that we have as workers, help educate the farmers in the area, and uh, we feel privileged being part of it. Right, back, 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 you need it After the outbreak, we realized that we have to collaborate more. We must always work as a team with information that we will get from EcoHealth, I think we will be able to be better prepared for future Rift Valley Fever outbreaks. We raise the alarm when we find a new virus. We tell the CDC and the World Health Organization that here's a virus that could become the next pandemic. Rift Valley Fever could be the next one to make the jump from Africa into the US. EcoHealth Alliance is working on the ground around the world to get between you and the next Ebola, the next Zika virus, and stop it before it emerges.